Hi everybody and welcome to Garden Style. So today I'm going to be covering crepe myrtles. Now crepe myrtles are originally from Korea and China. So it kind of give you an idea as to the zones and the areas that they come from. However, the southerners here in the United States have been enjoying crepe myrtles for a long, long time. And they've quickly become popular along the east coast. And I'm here to tell you today that we can also enjoy them on the west coast, especially here in the northwest where our temperatures are a little more tepid. As most of your crepe myrtles are really good between zone 6 and zone 9. So, for those of you who aren't aware that you can grow them here in the Northwest, you can. And we've started carrying quite a few of them at my nursery, at Sunnycrest Nursery, so that we can make them available to those of you here in the Northwest, because they'll do actually very well. Now, most of your crepe myrtles require full-on sun. They need at least six plus hours, so you want to put them in the sunniest part of your yard. And they can actually be very drought tolerant once they are established. And today I brought four different varieties that I'm going to discuss with you. Uh, as one of them is going to end up in my yard. I've always wanted one. And the thing that I enjoy the most about crepe myrtles is they are mid to late summer bloomers. And they have an extremely long bloom time, up to eight weeks. So when most of your shrubs and trees are all done blooming, the crepe myrtles start to kick in about mid midsummer, somewhere around June, July, and keep on blooming until about the end of August, if not longer. Just depends on your climate. Now, most of your crepe myrtles are considered trees, even though they look like a shrub when they first start out. Some of them can get quite tall. There are some varieties out there that can get up to 30 feet tall. And the ones I'm talking about here can get about 15 to 20 feet tall. And then there are also dwarf varieties that are more like a shrub than they are a tree. Now, there's been a lot of controversy on how to prune crepe myrtles, and I have seen them butchered, literally. But if you leave them alone, most of your crepe myrtles will start to create their own shape, and they're like a multi-stemmed type tree. They're not just one stem. So, depending on what you're looking for, a lot of them are trained into standards or where they have just one stem with the shrubbery on top or the leaves on top. But in their natural environment, they are a multi-stemmed tree. And that's how I want to grow mine because the bark is incredible, especially during the fall and the winter. It has a naturally peeling bark. And I remember as a kid peeling some of the bark off uh, when I lived down south and it leaves this beautiful like cinnamon, really smooth, um, trunk underneath. So they actually have like four seasons of interest, um, which is another thing. As you know, most of you who have been following me for a while, I like to get the most mileage out of my plants that I possibly can. So when it gives me four seasons of interest and I know it's going to make it here in the Northwest, I'm in. So, with four seasons of interest, that means as a deciduous shrub, you get the beautiful bark during the winter time. Of course, the gorgeous leaves and the canopy, once you see it starting to do its thing in the spring. Beautiful flowers during the summertime, and then a very colorful foliage during the fall. So, a lot of mileage coming out of this plant. Now, with crepe myrtles, I'm going to bring one here for you. You will see that this one doesn't have his leaves yet. So don't panic if you don't see them with their leaves yet. They're usually the last of all the shrubs out in the yard to get their leaves on them. And yet here I've got this variety <laughs> right here and he's got some tips here that need to be trimmed up. He's already got his leaves. So whatever you do when you go to plant them and they still have no leaves on them, don't panic. They will get their leaves on them as soon as those nighttime temperatures start to warm up. Okay, so I'm going to go over a few varieties here. So the one I have here on the side of me that I just picked up, this is called a Zuni crepe myrtle. And this guy will get about 9 feet tall by 8 feet wide. And of course I'm going to flash a picture there so you can see what its actual blooms look like. And they call this a lavender bloom. And of course they got to have full sun. 
and it's hardy from zone 6 to 10. So this is one of the few varieties that can actually handle those hotter temperatures, which is why you're starting to see more and more of these in areas of California, New Mexico, Arizona, um, because they are very drought tolerant once they get established. But I would imagine they would require a little more shade if you live further south in those particular states where it can be very dry. Uh, but up here in the northwest, we're always craving light anyway, so you want to make darn sure it gets at least six plus hours of sunlight during the day so that it gives you the most blooms um, as possible because that's what it's going to need. And then I have another variety here called Pecos Crepe Myrtle. Kind of like that name. And this one will only reach eight feet tall by six feet wide. And this particular guy gets kind of a deep pink bloom on it. And they call it a clear pink flower, flower trusses, and it has an improved hardiness over other varieties. And all these varieties I'm talking about currently have an excellent mildew resistance. These are all hybrids. The original crepe myrtles were really susceptible to powdery mildew uh, in the summertime. These have been bred to be more resistant, so those are the ones we, we absolutely have to carry here in the Northwest, considering the amount of moisture we have and there are times where we can have some very humid days on a very hot day during the summer. Um, and that's usually what encourages powdery, powdery mildew to start with. So these are a lot more resistant to that. And then another variety I have here, and this is the one that's going in my yard, and this one is called Tonto. And Tonto is good between zones 6 and 9, and this one will only get about 8 feet tall and just about as wide. Um, and you'll see in the picture that it's just absolutely stunning. I love the deep fuchsia red blooms that this particular variety gets. And I don't want a super tall tree um, in my yard as I don't want it shading out some of my sunnier gardens. But I definitely am going to appreciate the late summer, early fall blooms that this particular shrub tree, <laughs> it's actually a tree, is going to get. Now this one, the one I just showed you that has no leaves on it, but I'll flash a real pretty picture of it so you can see what it looks like. This has a beautiful red bloom on it, and this one is called Cherry Dazzle, and it's a dwarf crepe myrtle. And what I mean by dwarf is it will only get three to five feet tall, so it's more like a shrub than it is an actual tree. So read your tags if you're out shopping for crepe myrtles at your local nursery and just make sure you know how high these are going to get. Now the tree versions, if you're going to get nine to eight feet tall, you do not want to plant those anywhere near the house. You want to be able to move them out at least eight to ten feet away from the house. Mine is actually almost in the middle of my backyard because I want to be able to enjoy its beautiful sculptural trunks once I train it to do that way. And for this guy, let me just show you here real quick, I tried to find a shrub that had multiple stems down at the bottom. So as he starts to get taller, I'm going to start trimming off some of these stems at the bottom so that as it gets taller, it's going to show me its beautiful bark, peeling bark that it gets during the fall and the winter time. So all I can tell you about pruning these shrubs is you really don't need to go haywire on them, not like what you see landscapers do. Um, I've just seen them absolutely butchered to the point where the poor things can barely survive. You can over prune trees and shrubs to the point where they'll just stop blooming and they'll stop performing for you. They weren't meant to be pruned that way. So if you feel like your uh, crepe myrtle is getting a little leggy, then you don't want to take any more than a third off the top of it. And even then, I would only take out any dead, dying, or diseased branches um, and try and leave it alone as much as possible and let it follow its natural shape because uh, they're just beautiful all on their own. And I am so excited that we have them in and that I can finally get this in the ground. But I um, just wanted to cover four varieties that we currently have at the nursery. You can get flower colors from pure white to a lavender to pink, deep pinks, fuchsia pink, like what I'm going to get here with the Tonto crepe myrtle, or a beautiful red, like what you see with the cherry dazzle. All kinds of varieties out there, but whatever you do, make sure to read your tags so you know how to place them and where to place them. Now, when you go to plant your crepe myrtles, you want to make sure you put in a good compost in with the native soil when you go to plant it. Make absolutely sure it has really good drainage. 
and keep it well watered its first year while it's getting itself established and by the second year you should only have to water it when it's blazing hot out or you can see that obviously it's thirsty uh, give it a drink otherwise they're extremely drought tolerant and very low maintenance once you get them established now of course it's deciduous so you're still going to have the leaves that you need to break up during the fall or the spring uh, of course flowers but other than that they're a pretty low maintenance tree slash shrub <laughs> depending on the size that you decide to purchase and they're absolutely stunning during the mid to late summer uh, when everybody else is done it's very rare that you can find trees or shrubs that are blooming that late in the year uh, for as long as these guys do these you know it's at least seven to eight weeks of beautiful blooms as you can see in the pictures here so yes we can grow crepe myrtles here in the northwest and I encourage you guys to try them I'm going to and I'll certainly you know do an update later on when I go to do a garden tour and uh, let you know how they're doing all right you guys so in my next video i'm going to be very busy digging up hostas i have monster hostas that have probably tripled in size in this last three four years that i've had them in the ground so i'm going to show you guys how i dig them up and divide them some are going out to friends and then others will get scattered out to other parts of the garden uh, but they're naturally large hostas to begin with and uh, i put it off last year but I can't avoid it any longer. I've got to get in there and get these monsters divided uh, and give them some new homes and give them out to some friends. So I'll show you how to do that as well as cover a lot of different varieties of hosta as they're finally starting to emerge here in my climate. We've had some very cold nights here still. It's been a really cool spring for us. So things have been really slow to get, start emerging from the ground. But we are going to start receiving some new ones at the nursery that are all leafed out because they've been babied inside of a greenhouse. So I hope they're big enough to where I can cover several varieties with you and let you know what some of the newer varieties are and some good old standbys that will never fail you out in the garden. And did you know that their flowers are fragrant? So I'll be going over some of that as well. So hosta as it is in the next video. Hopefully you guys are having an excellent spring. You're definitely getting your hands dirty. This is the time to do it. And we'll talk soon. Bye for now.